G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. The day after a excellent Brownlow medal count, it was one of the more intriguing Brownlow counts we've ever seen. Of course, we did the live stream on Sunday night, myself and Busher got a little bit lit. But what made it great was the fact that we had a really, really high count, uh, in particular the guys at the top of the rankings, doing massively well in terms of the votes that they polled. And obviously, Ollie Wines was the eventual winner, and he equaled Dusty Martin's all-time Brownlow record for votes in a season. So it was fascinating. It went right to the last game. And I think it's great for Ollie Wines to be rewarded for a fantastic season. One player who didn't actually make the top three, but is still being talked about, you know, plenty following that Brownlow medal count is Sam Walsh who pulled off an incredible 30 votes in just his third season. I think I read somewhere that, you know, 30 votes would be enough to win you the Brownlow in all but six seasons in the past. Unfortunately for Walsh, this happened to be a year where the top contenders polled a lot of votes and it was the first time in history more than two players had polled more than 30 votes and we had four this year. So I thought I'd do a little video focusing on the progression of Sam Walsh, where he is now at just 21 years of age, kind of leads into a question posed by a very good friend of the channel. My mate David Ivey has been a long-suffering Carlton Blues man. He's been a big subscriber on the channel since day one. This is a shout out to you, David. Hope the twins are going well. Basically poses the question, is Sam Walsh the best 21-year-old we've ever seen? It's a really hard question to answer, but in today's video, I'm having a little crack at sort of comparing Sam Walsh against some of the other modern day AFL greats at the same age. Now, for those who don't know, Sam Walsh was pick number one in the 2018 draft and in his first season was the Runaway Rising Star Award winner. He copped the nomination in round four of that season. He went on to average an impressive 25 disposals, 10 contested possessions, five marks, and three tackles a game, which is ridiculous. And he played all 22 games in his first season. On top of that, he finished 2019 as the record holder for most disposals won by a first-year player in a given season. He was almost unanimously the rising star winner. He received 54 out of a possible 55 votes. So it was one of the best rising star seasons we've ever seen. And the conversation was at the time, just how far can this kid go? Well, you fast forward to where we are today and he's just averaged 30 disposals a game this season and five clearances. He's come fourth in the Brownlow medal and he single-handedly carried that Carlton midfield all year. He was voted second in the Players MVP award behind Bont and Pelly. He was fourth in the Brownlow behind Wines, Bont and Oliver. And as I said, would have won the Brownlow medal in most other seasons. He was sixth in the Coaches Award. And of course, he was an All-Australian midfielder this year as well. So is he the best ever at his current age? Well, we need to go through some comparisons. What I plan to do is go through some of the other best midfielders in the competition right now, namely Ollie Wines, Marcus Bontepelli, and Clayton Oliver, and compare Walsh at the same age. Firstly, we'll look at Wines, who is a number of years older and obviously took out the Brownlow medal on Sunday night. He's averaging five more touches a game than Wines at the same age. Wines wasn't a rising star, and he also only polled six Brownlow votes in his third year. So it's fair to suggest Walsh is well and truly past Ollie Wines at the same age. Bontempelli is a bit of a closer comparison. He didn't win the Rising Star in his given year, but he did average 24 and a half disposals. He made the All-Australian team, and that was in a premiership year for his club as well. On top of that, he polled a very respectable 20 Brownlow votes that season, although it only netted him eighth spot. Clayton Oliver was another player who started his career exceptionally well. He averaged 30 disposals a game in his second season, which is incredible, and then 29 a game in his third. He won a BNF in just his second season in 20. 2017 in a side that finished ninth, and he polled 13 votes in the Brownlow in his third season. So while Bont and Oliver were a little bit more comparable to Walsh in terms of what they've achieved at the same age, I'd probably give the points narrowly to Walsh against those three. So expanding that analysis further, let's have a look at some of the modern day greats. These are the Brownlow giants. I've kind of labeled them here. These are the guys that kind of have dominated the conversation for who's the best player in the game over the last, I don't know, five years. I'm talking about Dustin Martin, Patrick Dangerfield and Nat Fife. First of all, we'll talk about Dustin Martin and, you know, looking at where he is now in his career, it's hard to imagine a time where he wasn't lauded as an absolute legend, but it actually took until 2016, the year in which he turned 25, for him to really make his mark as an elite player in the game. Well, you could see the signs that he was going to be a very, very good footballer one day. He hadn't quite clicked in the way that he eventually would. He was still pretty good, pulling a respectable 23 votes across the first three years of his career combined, but he hadn't won an All-Australian or a BNF in his first three years. 
Patrick Dangerfield was drafted underage in 2007 as a 17-year-old, so we'll expand his scope to his first four years, I think is fair. Regardless, he was a pretty raw play in those years. From memory, may not have actually built the tank to be a full-time midfielder, but he never averaged more than 17 possessions a game and accrued just nine votes in those four seasons. So fair to suggest Walsh has him covered at the same age. Fife actually came on fairly quick. He might not have won the Rising Star Award, but he was averaging 25 possessions a game in just his second season and accrued 13 Brownlow votes that year and 14 in his third season. So compared to Dusty and Dangerfield, he had come on a little bit quicker, but still not quite on the Sammy Walsh level. And it wasn't until about 2014 where Fife truly made his mark as an elite player. So by comparison, Sam Walsh is far exceeding those three players to date. But I think you have to say that that is probably taking the analysis a little bit out of context. Context. I think it's fair to say with Dusty Danger and Fife, those players kind of rely on being a bit more physically developed than Sam Walsh does for his game. He's more of an elite runner, a fantastic ball user on the outside, certainly can get in and under and win the clearances, but probably doesn't rely on the same athleticism as the three players I've mentioned. So for me, I think it's clearly too simplistic to say just because Walsh is far better than those players at the same age, he's going to end up far better than those players as they turned out. But regardless, for the purposes of this analysis, we have to conclude that Sam Walsh was definitely a better player than those three players at the same age. So, so far, we've compared him to six very good to elite to almost GOAT level midfielders of the comp. And I'd say he's just about passed every test so far. So let's raise the bar a little bit further and compare him to Gary Ablett Jr., Chris Judd, and Lance Franklin. Now, Gary Ablett Jr. is probably not the greatest comparison either. He did start his career slowly as a, a small forward, averaging mid-team disposals and picking up a handful of Brownlow votes in his first three years. His improvement was non-linear, and I think in about 2007, he really, really exploded it into being probably one of the best players we've ever seen. Judd, for me, is the most interesting of comparisons. He was drafted pretty ready-made to the West Coast Eagles back in 2001. He only missed one game in his first three seasons, and for the record, Sam Walsh, I believe, has played every game in those three seasons. Now, similar to Sam Walsh, it would be Chris Judd's third season in the competition where he would truly break out as an elite player of the competition, claiming his first All-Australian. Similar to Walsh, he would also be the runner-up MVP in his third season. And again, like Walsh, in that third season, he would poll 30 Brownlow votes. But the difference being, he actually won the Brownlow medal. Now, there is a bit of an argument to suggest that modern day votes are a little bit inflated. It seems like the average votes needed to win the Brownlow is a lot higher and you can sort of cast your own theories about that. Are the best players simply getting more dominant? I'm probably not inclined to buy that straight off the bat. Are they getting noticed more? Who knows, that's not really the point of this video. Either way, you have to say that Sam Walsh compares very, very strongly against one of the greatest players of all time. Now, finally, let's compare him to someone like Lance Franklin. And this is a tough one because Lance Franklin is a key position forward. But so far, Sam Walsh has won most tests against players that we've compared him to. Franklin's incredible 113 goal season would come in his fourth year, which incredibly didn't see him win the MVP award, which I'm kind of still scratching my head over. In his third season in 2007, he still kicked a very impressive 73 goals. I feel like it's a key forward who traditionally take a little bit longer to develop. I want to kind of give Buddy that extra year or so leeway, and it's hard to give Sam Walsh the points in this comparison. Now, comparing players at 21 years of age obviously isn't the best way to extrapolate how good they will become because obviously players develop at different rates. For instance, I think Sam Walsh personally might be a little bit closer to his ceiling of potential than say an Ablett, Dusty or Bontempelli were. However, if we're simply framing the question as how does Sam Walsh compare to some of these AFL legends at the same age of 21, I'd be prepared to almost give him the points in just about every one of those matchups, except probably Chris Judd and Lance Franklin. Now, that's not me knocking Sam Walsh as such, I obviously think his ceiling is extremely high, but he's just already not that far from it. But that doesn't mean his ceiling's low because he's almost a Brownlow level quality player as it is. In fact, I think it's a very safe bet that Sam Walsh wins at least one Brownlow medal, if not multiple, in his career at Carlton. I guess the thing with Walsh that makes him a little bit different to some of those players is that with his supreme outside running game and his extremely good ball use, I don't know if his game really goes up a few notches if he simply gets a more mature body. I don't know if he's really reliant on that, which is kind of my theory as to why, you know, he's playing so well at such a young age compared to, say, a Christian Petrarca or a Dusty Martin were at that age. 
However, it's a safe bet. Sam Walsh is going to be an elite midfielder for a long time to come. He's going to be a regular 35 possession ball winning, damaging inside out midfielder before too long. And Carlton are very lucky to have him. But anyway, guys, that was my little cracker at comparing Sam Walsh to some of the legends of the game at the same age. Let me know in the comments what you think of my analysis. Were there some players you missed out and that you think should be compared to Walsh? I'm sure there's plenty you could probably conjure as well. But there's obviously so many players I can fit into a single video. So I try to stick with the modern day greats, the goats of bygone eras, and then the all time legends like your Judds, Franklins, etc. As always, guys, if you're enjoying the content, I'd appreciate you consider subscribing to the channel. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.